So what you're looking at is arguably one of the best sub £600 projectors available on Amazon. Hey what's up everybody my name is Mike and this is Tech404. So today we're going to be taking a very close look at ViewSonics Pro 7827HD, a full 1080p home theatre projector, arguably the best sub £600 projector that's currently on Amazon. Strangely, this particular model seems to cost a little bit less if you live in the States, around $500. Here in the UK, the Pro 7827 costs around £600, unless you manage to snag it on a prime deal. So the ViewSonic Pro 7827 is what I would call a multi-purpose projector because it has both features associated with an office environment as well as using it as a home theatre projector for your setup. Now we'll delve right into what those features are later on in the video but let me give you a quick run through of the actual specs of the 7827. So starting off with the DLP chip, it comes from Texas Instrument. Specifically, this projector uses the Dark Chip 3. Basic improvements are the gaps between the mirrors are smaller and the surface of each mirror is supposedly flatter. This gives you a more refined image. This is all on paper. We'll get to the image quality later on in the video. Theoretically, it should also give you a 25% increase in native CR over the DC2. On paper, at least, it's supposed to deliver higher contrast with much less in the way of light transmission defects. So these are all good things. So next we come to the color wheel. Now the color wheel on this projector is an actual RGB RGB color wheel and ViewSonic refer to theirs as the super color. Furthermore, this projector is also capable of displaying true blacks and creates a pretty impressive image, especially on a scene where you've got dark and light scenes simultaneously. It looks absolutely fantastic. The max claim contrast level on this projector is 22,000 to 1, and after watching about five movies and hours and hours of YouTube, I can quite honestly say that this projector is quite capable of hitting that 22,000 to 1 contrast level or claimed contrast level. So now that we've covered more of the highlighted features of the Pro HD, in terms of other relative information or specs, the projector is capable of 2200 lumens. In Super Eco mode, it can last up to 6,500 hours, has a throw ratio in meters of 1.1 to 1.5. The projector does have that lens shift dial, we'll take a look at that in a bit. Optical zoom of 1.3x, digital zoom anywhere from 0.8 to 2x. Speaker is a 10 watt cube design, this is a proprietary speaker and a custom, and honestly, it's a pretty good one. Screen size between 30 to 300 inches and with about a distance of about 2.5 meters or 2.6 meters, you'll easily get a 100 inch screen. So physically looking at the device from the top, you've got a brushed effect, almost aluminium. I like the buttons on the ViewSonic Pro HD. The keystone correction buttons are actually protruding out, while the menu source, exit, favorite, and your color mode are actually indented in. So if you're reaching around in the night and you haven't got the remote handy and you want to switch to, say, example, HDMI 2, you can actually easily identify what the buttons are. Design elements like this I really do appreciate as a consumer. By far one of the biggest selling points of the projector for me was that lens shift dial. The fact that it eliminates the need for software and gives you a physical dial made of metal with a pitted texture, it's easy to control and using it in person when I first set up this projector on my Xiaomi specific screen, the precision it gave me was remarkable, absolutely love it, amazing. So the body of the 7827 might be plastic, but where it counts, the dials are all made of metal. And again, just like the lens shift, the control that you get over the zoom and the actual focus dial is remarkable. Focusing this projector or actually aligning this projector to my screen was the quickest experience that I've actually had to set up out of any projector that I've actually tested on the channel. Focusing is pin sharp and again, on all four corners, no issues. The projector is really, really good in regards to that focus dial and the zoom ring. So on the left side of the projector, there's a tie down point in the center at the bottom and that bit of venting wraps around to the front section of the projector. And then we come around to the right side and again, there's a little bit of venting along the side of the projector and you can see a second fan. Now, what you might be more interested in is that Wi-Fi symbol on that piece of plastic that you can see. Now, if I go and get a little screwdriver and remove this, this is where the hidden wireless dongle would go, something like a Fire Stick or even a Google Chromecast. Or maybe you can go all out and get something like the HB 10B kit, which is capable of sending uncompressed HD audio and video wireless 
wirelessly to another device or from another device. Now when you plug in your Chromecast or whatever device it won't power the device until you go into settings and actually turn on the MHL settings for that port. I'm also happy to report that connecting it with my Google Chromecast, the experience was pretty damn seamless. And yes, there is a little bit of latency, but it is nothing that takes away too much from the experience. Now, if you're gonna be using it to stream a YouTube video or in an office environment where you're projecting some emails or maybe playing some simple games like this Mario game, the experience is actually remarkably good. And honestly, in terms of any kind of connection drops, after about using it for a good 40 minutes, I didn't lose connection once. In terms of rear I.O., we have the audio input, audio output, a S-video port, a video input, a USB 2.0 port, 5 volt, 2 amp, dual HDMIs, the latter of which has another MHL supported port. We have the monitor input, we have a computer input, mini USB and an RS something or other port as well. Now those are port selections, again suited for an office environment as well as a home entertainment projector. Now in terms of contents that is included with the Pro HD, once you open up the box you'll find a software CD with a pretty basic instruction manual and some batteries, UK power plug and you'll also get a European power plug if you're in the States, obviously you'll get the appropriate one, VGA cable and you get a pretty small remote control but it's quite ergonomic to hold, I quite like the design and again an office feature, it has a built in laser pointer. The lack of backlit keys on the remote control is very annoying, but you can keystone correct and access the important settings pretty quickly from the remote control. Included on the remote control are some strange buttons like an air mouse. Your test pattern is built in. I like that. And there is a blank button that you can program. So how about the user experience on the Pro HD? How about the menus? Are they easy to navigate? Well, pleasantly surprised. I actually quite like the layout. On the first tab, you got your screen correction options. You can change your aspect ratio. Color temperatures, you can even keystone correct. And this projector, like something like the Xgimme H1, it's even got four corner keystone correction. And honestly, it is as smooth as the Xgimme H1. Digital zoom, you can go in quite a few stops without losing too much in the way of detail. And again, as you can see, it is pretty damn good. Moving over to the next tab, you can actually change your color mode. You also have access to brightness, contrast, color temperature, overscan, and your HDMI settings. Now your color temperatures are pretty much the same as any other projector, but if you go into your HDMI settings, you can actually put it on enhanced mode. And then if you can, if you have any need to, you can actually change the format to RGB, or you can change it to YUV, or just most often, just leave it on auto. In terms of your advanced tab, you have access to color, tint, sharpness, and you can notch up that brilliant color level. I tend to leave mine at around a four or a five tops, depending on what I'm actually watching. And then you have your ISF mode. This projector has earned its ISF credentials, so you can have it professionally calibrated. Password is in the information pack. Honestly, I think ViewSonic have done a pretty good job to give users as much control over the projector to get the perfect image to suit their environment. So yeah, plenty to play with, very impressed. Now, I know I'm going to get this question a lot, so I thought I'd try and answer it. As you can see, I've got white blinds. They don't actually stop much light at all. It makes not much difference whatsoever. I have got them closed. I've got the blackout curtains open, and as you can see, the image is okay. You can still watch it, but all I'd have to do was to get some better blinds or maybe get some blackout curtains, and the daytime experience will be fine. The projector is hardly affected by artificial light. Now, I've got light coming in from the left side of the room and directly above the projector, and it doesn't seem to affect it. For the best kind of uh, experience, obviously you want as dark of an environment as possible, but the simple answer is, yes, this projector actually can handle some ambient light. It can actually handle quite a bit of ambient light, if I'm honest. I've actually also tested this projector under different signal sources via my Virgin TV box, also with an Android TV box, and through a laptop and a PC. Now this is a good example of color and uh, motion in the video, and there is a little bit of blur, but not too much. It is about the same as the Optima HD 143X, but the image looks a little bit sharper and the colors are much, much better. Problems to report are under super eco mode, that fan noise of around 32 decibels goes ridiculous and we're talking it goes into the 50s. So do not use this projector on super eco mode. I don't understand why super eco mode, why the fan actually spins up that much. But in terms of this projector, should you buy it? Well, I genuinely, genuinely think that this is one of the best buys that you can make 
at this price point. So that about wraps it up for this video, but if you guys have got any questions, drop them in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them. Now, if you're new to the channel and you've never seen any videos, then go ahead and check out some videos. If you like projectors or any kind of tech, gadgets, smartphone, tablets, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Click on that notification bell. We've got a lot of cool reviews coming up.